Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, DJ here with the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and I have a new commander out of Theros Beyond Death, and it feels like it really fits in this set because it deals with enchantments, it deals with auras. I'm talking about Siona. Siona, Captain of the Peleus, is one green-white for a 2-2 legendary creature human soldier. When Siona enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. So this deck is going to be all about auras. Your commander hits the battlefield and you get to go looking seven deep. Auras are pretty versatile too. It's not just making creatures bigger and bigger and bigger. You have auras that can interact with the battlefield a lot more now. So you can make sure that your deck is filled with a complement of them. One thing I really like about this commander is that an aura strategy often has you going all in on a single creature. But this commander has you going wide as well as tall, because every aura you put on a creature nets you another 1-1 attacker. So it has you attacking on different axes. That's kind of cool, and it lets you have your deck be a little bit more resilient. I also really like that this deck has a combo finish. It's a pretty well-known combination with Shielded by Faith. I'll show that to you in a minute, but sometimes it's nice to have a combo in a deck because games can go long. You need to win sometimes, and having an easy combo out could be a really good way to round out the power level of this deck. And finally, one of the last things I like about auras is how well-rounded they are. I particularly like the mana ramp that comes in auras, and so I want to explore that with you as well. The first thing I want you to look at is this combo. Let's get it out of the way early. Siona, when combined with Shielded by Faith, goes infinite, because Shielded by Faith reads one white-white for an aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature has indestructible. That's just kind of a good card in this deck anyways. We want our commander on the battlefield, and so giving it an indestructible is very strong. But here's where it goes infinite. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach Shielded by Faith to that creature. Ah, there it is. Shielded by Faith enters the battlefield, and then Siona says, hey, make a 1-1. One, one. Shielded by, by Faith says, oh, by the way, if you want to, you can attach this aura to that new 1-1. One, one. You do so, and then Siona says, ah, I see you've attached an aura to a new creature. Let me do you a favor and create a 1-1. One, one. And then you attach the Shielded by Faith to this brand new 1-1, one, one, and ah, you have a loop. You can make as many soldiers as you want, and then eventually you have to wait a turn and then attack everyone to death. You just pray that people don't have Rakdos charms in their deck. Let's take a look at some of the strengths of Enchantress, and I think that has to do with the card draw in it. I want to talk about two of my favorite Enchantresses. The first one is Eidolon of Blossoms. Two green green for a 2-2 enchantment creature spirit as Constellation. Whenever Eidolon of Blossoms or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. We're going to be playing lots of enchantments, and the fact that this is an enchantment that draws us a card, and then when we play other enchantments we draw cards, we can start churning through our deck, which means some enchantments that look a little bit dumb could cantrip or draw two cards or three cards or have bigger effects. Enchantments play really well together. Let's take a look at a few more enchantresses. The next one comes out of this set. It's Satessin Champion. Two and a green for a human warrior with constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Satessin Champion and draw a card. Satessin Champion will get big and we will draw lots of cards. You know, a card that's pretty similar to that is Core Spirit Dancer. It also lets you draw cards and go big at the same time. Core Spirit Dancer is one and a white for a zero two. Core Spirit Dancer gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it. Yeah, that means it can get real big real fast. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. By the way, this isn't even all of them. These are just the few that I like, and I'll explain why I like some better than others. I really like Eidolon of Blossoms because it draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and it's an enchantment itself. For example, the Satessin Champion, it's not an enchantment. So when it enters the battlefield, it's just like, cool, you got a creature. Enchantress's Presence I like a lot because it is an enchantment, although it says whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. I would prefer if that said enters the battlefield, because sometimes we have ways for enchantments to kind of move in and out of the battlefield a little bit. 
Seder Enchanter is pretty strong. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card, 2-2. Two, two. Mesa Enchantress, just as difficult to cast with one white white, but it's an 0-2. Oh, Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. And then finally, we have a little bit more specific, but cheaper to get on the battlefield. Season of Growth is an enchantment, costs two CMC. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, draw a card. That means it's not going to hit all of the enchantments, but it will kind of trigger on every aura that targets one of your creatures. So pretty narrow. Also lets you get some scry action, so that's pretty good. Uh, Nessian Wanderer, again, straight out of the new set. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. So if you happen to have a land, then you get to draw a card. Yeah, that's not exactly the same as draw card, but lands are cards too. Don't you discriminate. Okay, and then finally we have Sram Senior Edificer. Again, it's a two mana, two, two. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. So again, all of these have different kind of effects to them. Some of them are a little bit better than others. Some of them are more narrow. Some of them cost more. Some of them cost less. Some are enchantments. Some are creatures. Oh my gosh. It can be hard to keep them straight, but I have a feeling that if you get a good sort of balance of these, you can play a lot of spells and draw a lot of cards. One other way to get huge advantage from enchantments is to pull them all back. So yeah, we got some tutors for enchantments, we got some recursion from enchantments, but we really want some big time splashy spells. Retether is definitely one for this deck. Three and a white for a sorcery, return each aura card from your graveyard to play. Only creatures can be enchanted this way. All right, this is great. You're just like taking all of your enchantments and bruh, putting them back onto the battlefield. This is also a great form of protection because if you ever get board wiped and all your enchantments are gone, like it's bad. And then finally we have the cards that kind of break the budget, Replenish. Replenish just pulls all of your enchantments back onto the battlefield. Yeah, that includes your Enchantress's presence and your other cool enchantments too, yeah. It's great, it's also on the reserve list, it's also very expensive. So that might not be for you. Um, this deck can actually be surprisingly cheap. The version I have on tapped out in the description down below is about $120. And you can easily get that down to like $80 or $90. And if you wanna go really budget, I'm confident that you can get a $50 build of this deck and have it be really solid. So whatever your price point is, this deck can be fun and competitive. Uh, I'm going to talk about one more expensive card while I'm in the sort of the expensive card section, and that's Sarah Sanctum. It makes a lot of mana. Uh, unfortunately, it's also very expensive and on the reserve list. So if you want to break the bank, these two cards are super impactful. But if you don't want to worry about it, don't. This deck will still be awesome. Okay, moving on to making a lot of mana, let's talk about the enchantments that improve your mana base. Wild Growth is one green, Enchant Land, whenever it's tapped for mana, it adds an additional one green. And Utopia Sprawl is very similar. You have to enchant a forest, we will have forests in this deck. And you get to choose your color, you'll probably choose white or green, who knows. But think about it this way. How often do you have one mana accelerants in Magic? You, you often don't really, like... I mean, we really, really like the two mana ramps like Farseek or Nature's Lore or even like Three Visits or something like that. But when it comes to one mana accelerants, you kind of have to go with Elves. And Elves have Summoning Sickness and they're vulnerable. These enchantments, I mean, they're on lands. And land destruction is not something that happens a lot in our format. So these are what I'm considering Prime Ramp. And then finally, we have two mana accelerants like Fertile Ground and the brand new Wolf Willow Haven. So good, and you can cash it in for wolves later. That sounds perfect to me. And you can see how many cards are going in this deck that are straight out of Theris Beyond deck. It makes me feel like this is really a deck designed for this set. And you know, if we're talking about enchantments that, that really produce mana, I can't not include Smothering Tithe. It's great. Unfortunately, it's like eight bucks, but it's very good. And this deck can be very mana hungry. Let's also talk about some control based on auras. We have Kenrith's Tent Transformation, Lingify and Darksteel of Mutation. There are other ones out there. I also like Song of the Dryads. Um, 
there's some ones that like uh, Oblivion Ring that can definitely take some stuff out and uh, Active Authority. But I like these because they're auras and there is some aura synergy in this deck. And so that's really cool too. Kenrith's, transform Kenrith's Transformation is great because it lets you draw a card. Drawing cards are great. I love it. All right. So this is a lot of the backbone of the deck. We had like card draw, mana ramp, removal, and then some of the synergy that we can see already building. But that doesn't really address the theme of the deck, which is um, let's play enchantments and make dudes. Okay. I think the first thing that really matches with our commander is going wide because she goes wide. She brings a bunch of soldiers with her. So let's continue with that theme with Sigil of the Empty Throne, A Johnny's Chosen, and the brand new Archon of Sun's Grace. These will put angels and pegasuses and kitty cats onto the battlefield, and we have a deck where we can deploy a bunch of enchantments in a single turn, and then suddenly we have an army out of nowhere. It's, it's very, very fun. Okay, a little bit of a slower version. We have Dream Pod Druid. At the beginning of each upkeep, Dream Pod Druid is enchanted. Create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. You just get one extra token every turn. Yeah, that might not be good enough, but we might have some incentive to make tokens if we include cards like Divine Visitation, because that turns all of our tokens into 4 4 angels. It's also nice because it synergizes with our commander, so we know we're going to have tokens. We maybe want to make sure we have enough tokens if we're including Divine Visitation. And by the way, if you're feeling like you want to have a budget or version of this deck, cut Divine Visitation. It doesn't need to be in there, and it's one of the more expensive cards. So if we're also going to go wide, we can have some creatures support that going wide strategy. Celestial Ancient can make your bunch and bunch of tokens get bigger and bigger and bigger with each enchantment. My favorite card in this deck, like by far, is Heavenly Blade Master. This is an underappreciated card. It is truly amazing. You need to you need to look at this. Five and a white for a three six angel with flying and double strike. And when it enters the battlefield, you may attach any number of auras or equipment you control to it. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to Heavenly Blade Master. So if three auras get sucked over onto Heavenly Blade Master, not only can she be a gigantic double striking monster, just suddenly all your random soldiers get pumped up plus three plus three. And that is a really, really modest case scenario there. One thing that kind of stinks though is that there's very few enchantments in this deck that could give haste. And so that means that the big monstrous double striking angel that could get through a lot of damage and be awesome might have to sit on the battlefield a whole turn before she can actually swing. Okay. There's a few other cards that really synergize with the going tall and going wide strategy, and I really like Overwhelming Stampede. Let's say you have a gigantic Heavenly Blade Master that you can't wait to swing with, but Overwhelming Stampede just says, just kidding, I'll take your power, and I will apply it to all those little guys that are already there. And that's something that really works naturally with the way this deck is, go is designed. Okay, so we want to go wide, but we also want to go big, and that's really where enchantments shine. We have cards like Ethereal Armor, All That Glitters and Ancestral Mask. We equip up our creatures and suddenly they get huge and exponentially huge. As we get more and more enchantments attached to a creature, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you have all three of these enchantments on a creature, it'll get plus three plus three for Ethereal Armor, plus three plus three for All That Glitters, and plus four plus four for Ancestral Mask. That's plus ten plus ten for this suite of awesome, awesome enchantments, and it just grows from there. It's so easy to imagine a wild growth on one of your lands or a Kenrith's transformation on one of your opponent's creatures, and suddenly things get bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more out of control. You can also make sure that you get that damage in with cards like Unflinching Courage and Armadillo Cloak. That trample is so critical to make sure that you get that damage through. And then finally, we just have some solid cards. Shield of the Oversoul, giving your creature indestructible is really good because they're vulnerable when you've equipped them with all of these awesome enchantments. Flying is also great because you do want evasion to get that damage through. Daybake Coronet is just a soup of keywords. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus three, has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. But it's got to be already ored up in order for Daylight Break Cornec to connect. And then finally, we have Rancor. This is a recursive threat. Plus two plus oh and Trample. You get it back. It's just a solid card. 
Let's get our creatures protected with Umbras, Spider Umbra, Hyena Umbra, and Snake Umbra. Let's get them further protected with Bear Umbra. Untapping our lands is amazing. And also Umbra Mystic, sort of making every single aura you have an Umbra aura. And then finally, let's get really big with cards like Eidolon of Countless Battles. Really big and then falls off and becomes its own creature so you can enchant it up as well. Nylea's Colossus. Make big the big creatures bigger big. It's so cool. I love putting a bunch of enchantments on the battlefield and then suddenly no one can do anything. Just everything is huge and you just swing in and kill the entire board. Just imagine of Nynaelius Colossus with a replenish. It's backbreaking. And then finally we have Sage's Reverie. It's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit vulnerable, but I love that card draw that you get plus that added plus one plus one value. And then finally, if we are looking for the biggest, the most impactful aura out there, well, it's got to be Eldrazi Conscription. It literally makes your creature into an Eldrazi, annihilating them. Plus 10, plus 10. If you're running Eldrazi Conscription, you have to pair it up with Aura Touched Mage. That means you're paying 6 mana for a 13, 13 Annihilator 2. Oh, so nice. All right, everyone. So what does this deck look like? Well, it's a deck that is really, really redundant because you have lots of enchantresses to keep you drawing cards. You have ramp that it really reliably ramps on your mana base. And then a lot of times in other decks, if you draw a ramp spell or maybe just a random enchantment or an aura later on in the game, it doesn't do anything. But in this deck, having low cost auras generates you 1-1-1 creatures. It can generate you card draw. It can basically make this whole deck run and cascade into more and more Pegasuses and angels and soldiers and card draw and card draw and card draw. It is great. Pretty soon, you have a giant creature that your opponents can't deal with, and you're smashing in with a trampling lifelink thing, or you're annihilating your opponent, or they've locked that down, and so what have you done? You've naturally gone wide with all of your little tokens, your Pegasuses and your soldiers, and then suddenly it's just an overwhelming stampede or a heavenly blade master before your tiny army becomes an impossible to deal with army. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this video. I want to thank specifically Cool Stuff Inc. because they sponsor the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. If you want to get this deck, you can literally put it in your cart and walk away for under $100. So check this out at Cool Stuff Inc. And if you use the coupon code JUMBO5, you'll get 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons who support me all the time. Thank you, patrons. You are truly amazing. And I can't wait to talk to you more because I have more video ideas in my brain coming out very soon and I'm so excited to share them all with you. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.